Seven chords are a four note chord. Just like triads, they have the root, third, and fifth of the chord, but unlike triads, they add the seventh of the chord. We learned last time that there are four different kinds of triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented. And in the intervals video, we learned that the interval of a seventh can also be major, minor, diminished, or augmented. So if we take all the different types of triads and all the different types of sevenths, there are 16 different kinds of seventh chords possible. Fortunately, only five of these are commonly used in music compositions. That isn't to say the other 11 are never used in music. They're just less common. So we'll focus on the five common types of seventh chords today. The first one is called a major seventh. It's made of a major triad and a major seventh. The second one is called a dominant seventh. It's made of a major triad and a minor seventh. The third one is called a minor seventh. It's made of a minor triad and a minor seventh. The fourth one is called a half diminished seventh. It's made of a diminished triad and a minor seventh. The last one is called a fully diminished seventh. It's made of a diminished triad and a diminished seventh. Just like triads, seventh chords can come in different inversions. Remember that an inversion happens when the lowest note of the chord is not the root. So if we take this seventh chord as an example, here it is in root position because the root is in the bass. Let's see what it looks like with the other notes of the chord in the bass. We could have the third of the chord in the bass, also called first inversion. Then we could have the fifth in the bass, also called second inversion. And lastly, we could have the seventh in the bass, also called third inversion. Now, let's take this example piece of music and see if we can identify the seventh chords in it. Here's what it sounds like. First, let's start by writing the note names of the chords in order from the root, third, fifth, to seventh. Looking at the first chord, there is a C in the bass, then a G, an E, and another C. If we stack those up in thirds, then we have C in the root, E in the third, and G in the fifth. Since there are two C's in this chord, we will write another C in the root row. One more thing we can do is circle the note that's in the bass. This will help us identify if the chord is in root position or if it's an inversion. For the first chord, C is in the bass, so we'll circle one of the C's. We can continue this analysis but when we get to the second beat of the second bar, we see our first seventh chord. The notes are F in the bass, D, G, and B. When we stack the notes of the chord in thirds, we can see that there is a root, third, fifth, and for the first time, a seventh. Since the seventh is in the bass, we will circle it and keep going with the analysis. On the second beat of the next bar, we see our next seventh chord. The notes are F sharp in the bass, D, A, and C. When we stack the notes of the chord in thirds, we can see that D is the root, F sharp is the third, A is the fifth, and C is the seventh. Since F sharp is in the bass, we'll circle it and finish the last two chords of the analysis. The only seventh chords we found are the second beat of the second bar and the second beat of the third bar. Let's see if we can identify what kind of seventh chords they are. Remember that we identify seventh chords by looking at the kind of triad and what kind of seventh are in the chord. In this first one, the triad is G, B, D. This is a major triad. Then the interval from G to F is a minor seventh. A seventh chord made of a major triad and a minor seventh is a dominant seventh. 
So this is a G dominant 7th chord. The second one has D, F sharp, and A in the triad. This is also a major triad. Then the interval from D to C is a minor 7th. So this is also a dominant 7th chord. D dominant 7th to be precise. Now, we haven't talked about how 7th chords function yet because we're focused on being able to identify and name the 7th chords for now. We'll get to how the 7th chords are used when we start talking about chord progressions in a future video. For now, keep practicing identifying the triads and 7ths to get more comfortable with 7th chords. Thanks for watching! These videos would not be possible without your support. If you would like to support this channel, please check out our Patreon link below. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos.